the book of John, chapter 15, verses 12 to 15. The book of John, chapter 15, verses 12 to 15. Let's hear the word of God. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. No longer do I call you servants. For a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friend. For all things that I have heard from my father, I have made known to you. On this note, I welcome you to in his presence where your friend, my friend, Christ Jesus, calls us to worship. It is so good to be before the Lord on a Sabbath day. You know, because it's been six days of going through toil and pain, sometimes excitement, but it's six days of work. And so you cannot even dedicate a lot of time to worship your maker. And so on the seventh day, which is the Sabbath day, which God calls the day of rest, because he himself rested on the seventh day as a sign to show you and me what to do on the seventh day. On a Sabbath day like this, it's so exciting to be before the Lord because we know it's a day of creation and recreation. The Lord is going to recreate us anew. And so we need to trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Father Lord, we thank you for this holy Sabbath day. We thank you for your grace and mercy. We thank you, Father, that what you, have, you picked up from your Father in heaven, you shared with us and you called us friends, not servants. Because a friend knows what his friend is doing. We thank you for teaching us about love, that we love one another just as you loved us. Father, today we commit our lives into your care. We're here before you. We ask for your Holy Spirit's blessings on this holy Sabbath day. May you be with us. May you direct our ways. Even as we worship you, Father, may your Holy Spirit guide us all throughout the period. In Jesus' mighty name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. We're going to go for our first musical break. And when we come back, it will be time to pray. <music> Jesus, Lord. 
Beloved, what demons could do in Bible times, they can still do today. Just that we don't see them does not mean they aren't there or functioning. The Bible tells us that demons are fallen angels who rebelled against heaven and are organized under Satan. We have to pray against them because they are real. We might not believe it. We might not trust in it. We might not even experience them physically. But they exist. And therefore, the best weapon we have in consistently defeating Satan is effective and constant discipleship through scripture and prayer. So, beloved, we're going to pray. We're going to pray that the Lord leads us in our spiritual warfare. The Bible tells us that the battle we fight are not against flesh and blood, but they're against principalities and powers in higher places. And so we need to fortify ourselves. And we cannot fortify ourselves if we do not read the scripture and pray. And so, beloved, start to pray. Start to pray. Start to pray that God strengthens you. God fills you with the power of the Spirit that day <coughs> and night you will read the word, you will pray. In order that Satan does not act out with us, We need to pray, for we are not unaware of his schemes. Beloved, pray. 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 It is important that you pray that God strengthens you. It is important that you pray that God guides you against the powers of darkness. Timothy, 1 Timothy 4, 1 tells us, the Spirit clearly says that in latter times, some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. So you need to pray that you do not fall away as Timothy has spoken about. Beloved, pray. 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 You, you, you might think this is a joke. But remember that Jesus asked him, what is your name? And he says, Legion. He replied, because many demons had gone into him. And so this is not a joke. It is a reality. And when you play with it, your life will never be the same. And therefore pray. Beloved, pray. Pray. 
that God delivers you from the hands of the evil one, that God delivers you from demons, that God protects you. He sends a shield around you to protect you day and night. And that's for you need to pray. You need to pray constantly asking God, ask him. Ask him. He will never leave you nor forsake him. So far as you do his will, you follow his ways and you follow his commandments and you trust and obey in him and ask him diligently, my Jesus will never leave you. Beloved, pray. 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 Because you know when you pray and Jesus is with you, it will be like in the time of, of, of Matthew chapter 8, verse 31, where the demons beg Jesus, if you drive us out, send us into the heads of the pigs. Because they know that Jesus has already won the battle. And if they know, what are you doing? Why are you not putting yourself in the hands of Jesus who has already won that battle for you and you are trying to struggle to clear yourself of that demonic attack, that demonic spirit, that demonic exercises that is within you? Ask Jesus. Give your life to Jesus. Speak to him now. He's willing and ready to hear you. Beloved, don't take it for a joke because life, will not wait for you. And therefore, Father, help us to love. Help us to love one another just as you loved us. Help us to build a relationship one with another just as you've done with us. Help us, Father, that we fall not in the counsel of the ungodly, that we walk not in the path of sinners and scorners, that day and night we meditate on your word and ask for your direction. May your Holy Spirit guide us and be with us, even as we are with you. We ask that this day, Father, you cleanse us of all unrighteousness. You wash us anew, Father, and create in us a new heart, a heart that loves you in truth and in spirit, and a heart that loves our neighbor, just as ourselves. May your Holy Spirit guide us this day and forevermore. As I pray, I commit our preacher man, Pastor Dr. Divine Ayewo, into your care. May you speak through him to us. And may those words be words that will pierce us to draw closer unto you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. Beloved, if you prayed with me, know that God has heard you and is not going to leave you nor forsake you. He's holding you with his righteous right hand. We're going to go for our next musical break. And when we return, the voice you'd hear will be that of Pastor Dr. Divine Ayivo.
Happy Sabbath. We want to thank God for bringing us together again to hear his words. Let us pray. Father, it's time to hear your words. Thank you for taking us through another week with all the struggles. But because we are here, we are victorious. You are doing things for us. You are blessing us. You're watching over us. You're protecting us. You're providing for us. Father, what more do we ask? Pour your Holy Spirit upon us now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Scripture reading for today is taken from Matthew 4, verse 1. Matthew 4, 1. Bible says, Then Jesus said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord your God, and him only shalt thou serve. Today's topic, the enemy of God is real. Satan, devil, dragon, beast, Lucifer, all refer to one person. Satan, he is very real in our world and he has a host of fallen angels with him and they are able to live within people harass people, even church people. When you give them a chance, they take hold of you. When Jesus came on earth, most of the work he did was to cast out demons from people. Some people got seven. Somebody had legion. They occupy. In my ministry, Several times I lay hands on people to pray for them and they melt. They fall down. It takes a lot of prayer, prayer, struggle before they come back to themselves. My friends, don't play. Don't play with this thing here or take it like it's nothing. No. No, it is something. This poor lady with her husband. They're living together happily. Things started happening. A demon fell in love with his wife and will come and have sex with this woman while she's lying beside the husband in bed. Embarrassed, she can't tell anybody. One day she got herself together. Said, Pastor, this is what is happening to me. I'm ashamed to tell anybody because I'm a Christian. I don't know what it is, but it happens every night. This rascal demon comes there. And my husband is beside me, and I'll try to nudge him. No, he has to have his way with me. We fasted for three days in the name of Jesus Christ. We went to the house. We anointed the house and we prayed and we prayed. We anointed a woman. God being who he is, more powerful than the demon. Demon came midnight but couldn't touch the lady in the name of Jesus. They have a glass door to their bedroom. He smashed the door. The door broke and he left and praised Jesus. He never came back. Demons' forces are going to increase in the last days. As you embark on rituals and rituals and want to see magic, want to see this, all those things lead you into it. You become a victim in the hands of demonic forces. If God is your God, why do you go to Malam? Why do you go to people you don't know that they should lay hands on you? And when they lay hands on you, you are becoming something you are not. Trust God. Trust him. He cast the devil out of heaven. Jesus Christ. You walk around town, you see very, very young girls. They're talking to themselves. They are crazy. They are mad. Demonic influences. Pray for them. 
Sabbath, I was in church one day. Getting ready to have my opening. Solemn hour. A woman ran into the church. That's my deacon's wife. Pastor, pastor, we have to go to the hospital. My husband is gone mad. He took off his clothes and he ran into the street. And the police got him. I said, oh. Lady, I'm ready to preach now. Let me finish preaching. And we'll go to the hospital. So I'm not leaving until you go. I said, sit down. Let's worship God. Power is not in me. Power is in God to do what he has to do. God knows what is happening. After service, we went to the hospital. And they put him in a cage. They have a cage in the hospital. He's inside the cage, locked up. I asked them to open the cage for me. They said, no, he's very wild. You have to sign a waiver. I said, bring the waiver. I signed the waiver. And they opened the cage. And they were all watching that something is going to happen to me. What is going to happen to me? I knew nothing is going to happen to me. Nothing of this world. I got in the cage and they closed it behind me and I started praying. I started calling on my God. I started praying. I started praying. I started rebuking. I rebuked him. Get out of him. In the name of Jesus. When I finished prayer, praise Jesus. Deacon got out of the bed. said, Pastor, where am I? What happened to me? What happened to me? He doesn't know what happened to him. In the slip of a moment, devil can take charge. That's why we have to be soaked in the blood of Jesus, you and I. We have to be soaked in the blood of Jesus. Don't feel it is work for you to get up at midnight to pray. No, don't feel it's too much for you to read your Bible, to read some Psalms, to, to, to protect yourself in the hands of God. No. You need to do those. Especially in the last days. Our time. You can't play with prayer. I'm in the church. No. Some of you are in churches. Your pastors are demon possessed. They know it themselves. Join a commandment-keeping church. If they won't keep the Sabbath holy, be careful. Even those in the Seventh-day Adventist church, there are demons among us. There are. Because wherever the Spirit of God is, the demon wants to be present. That's why everywhere Jesus went, they followed him. In the Sanhedrin, they followed him. In the Pharisees, they followed him to torment him, to frustrate him, to make his work difficult. Yes. So is it in the last days. So my friends, today's sermon is about the devil. Keep close to God. You young ladies sleeping with any man because they got money, the money itself is ritual money. You yourself, you are going to be used for ritual. Don't be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Stay with the people you grew up with. Find your mate among them. Do that for your own good. We are living in dangerous times. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. Take your relationship with God one notch up. Seriously. Don't lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. God is a refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. If the devil could tempt Jesus, who are you for him not to tempt you? 
If he derailed Adam and Eve, who are you for him not to derail? Only Jesus can help us. Only the blood, the blood can overcome him. And he is a defeated foe in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Where did Satan come from? Satan was created. You know. He was created. He lived in heaven. Luke 18.10, the Bible says, And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. He was a cherub, a cherubim, two winged angels, very strong and powerful, who stand before the throne of God. Ezekiel described him this way. Ezekiel 28, verse chapter 13 to 15 and 17. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was there covering. We were made from dirt. Listen to how he was made. Sardius, topaz, diamonds, beryl, onyx, and the jasper, and the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of your tablets, the pipes, was prepared in thee in the day which thou was created. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have said thee so. Thou was upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down the midst of stones of fire. Thou was perfect in the ways from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. Verse 17, thine heart was lifted up because of your beauty. Thou hast corrupted their wisdom by reason of your brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Amen. Satan is real, but God is greater. Amen. Satan was the leader of of the angels and sung his pipes 17 pipes in his vocal cords just like a pipe organ he stood before god as a covering cherub that stretched their wings over the mercy seat in the holies of holies now the question is if the devil was at all then why was he cast out Isaiah, Isaiah described that for us. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the north side of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. If this, you can see that the devil was aiming at those things that destroy us as children of God. Pride. Pride. Because of your little uh, degree you have or your little Kia that you're driving, your, 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 your little house that you're in, you, or your little position, you become so proud. Whenever you hear those words, do you know who I am? You are nothing. I give you the answer from here. You are nothing. You are what you used to be in your village when you had no shoes on your feet. You're the same person. If everything is different today, it's by grace. Always remember that. You are where you are today because of grace. Not because of your power. Not because of your might. Not because of your essence. Some of you, where you are today, is not even by grace. It's because you are corrupt and you are a thief. That's where you are here today. But those will not last. Whatever God did not give you, you will lose. It will go away because God has not given it to you. Covetousness. You want what anybody has. 
it's better for you to have it than for them to have it. God was on his throne. God was created. The devil said, I want to be on your throne. I want to be above you. How? How can a creature be above the creator? That's what we have. You and I, we have that problem. Power and fame. I am. I am. You are what? You are something that can die tomorrow. That's what you are. Always remember that. Money cannot save your life. Money can buy medicine, but your health, that's a different story. God, God, God is our anchor. God, Jesus Christ, those things, humble yourself and he will lift you up. Too big and majestic in your own eyes. Anytime you say to anyone, do you know who I am? You are talking like the devil. He was too big and could not fit himself under the rulership of God. And therefore, he must be cast out of heaven. If in the office you cannot subordinate under the leadership of your CEO, be ready to walk out. Revelation 12. Revelation 12. We can read a little more. Revelation 12. Verse 3 and 4. It says, And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns on his head. And he still drew the third part of the stars of heaven. Those are angels. And did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which were ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as she was born, Jesus Christ. Look at verse 7. It says, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought with his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, who deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Amen? Devil lost the fight in heaven and was cast down to earth. But then, that did not change his attitude towards God. He's still looking to have more people on his side than God has. So he continued with his threat by attacking only subjects on earth at that time, turned them against God, brought them onto his side. He deceived poor Adam and Eve. Genesis 3, 1 through 6. Genesis 3, 1 through 6. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord had made. And he said unto the woman, Yes, had God said, Ye shall not eat any of the fruit in the garden of Eden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. The serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. He is an expert in telling you what God says is not true. That's why you go to church, you tell your pastor, Sabbath, Saturday, and he tells you, no, it's not Saturday, it's Sunday. If you say why, you say all the commandments were nailed to the cross. They were nailed to the cross until you touch his wife. Then he would tell you, you are committing adultery. Where did he find adultery from? If he was nailed to the cross. 
put your money in his pocket and take his wallet. You are a thief. Thou shalt not steal. Where did he find that from? If he's nailed to the cross, all those things should be all right. And you believed him. Ask questions. For one day you have to stand before the judgment seat of God to give account of what is done in your body. Jesus said, don't be deceived. If you let yourself be deceived, knowing what you know with your intelligence, then you have yourself to blame. When the woman saw the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took the fruit thereof and did eat and also gave it to her husband with her and he did eat. So he won Adam and Eve, got them onto his side by yielding their obedience and allegiance to Satan. Are you at that point? May the Lord deliver you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In come the second Adam, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Satan attacked Christ on earth in his childhood. Satan used Herod when the wise men came and told him about Jesus, a new king of the Jews born. Thank God he didn't follow them to go to Bethlehem to see, but he allowed them to go, and they went and saw, but never came back and gave him a report. He sent soldiers to Bethlehem, killed every child two years and behind, and they killed all these children, but God was always ahead of the devil. God has sent Joseph and Mary and Jesus out of the country. He took them to Egypt for safekeeping. Praise Jesus. God helped again. God sent his son to Egypt for preservation. Satan used Pharisees against Christ to frustrate him. Delivered Christ to Romans to crucify. In his satanic mind, he was disturbing the plans of God, but he was rather helping God in the salvation process. For without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. May God turn all satanic malevolent attacks against you into nothing. May God bless you. And make you stand strong. Jesus rose from the grave on the third day. What is the devil doing now? Deception. Misleading. Even the very elect. For the things he's doing. Matthew 24, 4. Jesus warns of deception. People who come in the name of Jesus. He says, when they tell you he's here, don't go. If they tell you he's in this chamber, don't go. God is invisible. The only visible sign we see of Jesus is when we see him coming in the skies. Behold, he's coming with clouds. Every eye shall see him. We shall all see him. It's not a hidden thing. Jesus, when he bursts the cloud, every eye will see him. It's not going to be something you're going to see on CNN or Al Jazeera. No. Everybody will see him like we see lightning in the sky. 2 Corinthians 4, 3 and 4. But if our gospel is hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world have blinded their minds, not their eyes, their mind, of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ to shine of them the image of God. Satan has devised a way to keep people from hearing and believing the gospel of salvation. To keep them from being saved. For faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Revelation 13, 13 and 14. And he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on earth in the sight of men. And deceive them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, 
which had been wounded by a sword and did live. Destroying lives. Peter won't be sober, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. The devil is using drugs, alcohol, smoking, sex, hatred, witchcraft. He lures you slowly, and before you know it, you are hooked. False worship, substituting the commandment of God with the doctrines of men. Whatever God said, the devil has a counterfeit, which looks almost like original. Many deceived people believe we are worshiping the same Jesus. But there are two Jesuses in the Bible. Two Gospels. Two spirits. They are different. 2 Corinthians 11.4. You can go and read this to your pastor. 2 Corinthians 11 verse 4. The Bible says, For if he that cometh preached another Jesus, another Jesus, not the one that we preach, whom we have not preached. Or if you receive another spirit, the one that makes you fall, the one that makes you fall, the one that when they touch you, you start behaving like something, something has been injected into your body. When did you see Jesus do that? Or Paul? Where is it in the Bible? Have you been to Jerusalem? I have been. It's all hills, and Jesus is always on a hill preaching. You think if people were falling down, you know how many? Can you imagine it? And you think that's a miracle, and then you join in. Now the style is people preaching, and they, they're speaking in tongues. Two people speaking in tongues. You ask them, do you understand each other? They don't. What tongue is it? They don't know. All this do you understand what you are saying? If you are speaking in spirit, what are you saying? Paul said what you said, there must be an interpreter. There must be somebody who understands what you are saying. And if you are doing it, only you understand it. Don't you know you are the devil or an agent of a devil? Which of the gospels do you see anybody speaking in tongues? They should have written it in the Bible like that. Pink for the tongues. Because red is the letter of Jesus. Black is the regular writing. Maybe they also put pink or blue that this is speaking in tongues. I'm begging you, if the devil has employed you and you think he has given you something demonic, don't display it in public. Stop that speaking in tongue business. Thank God Jesus never spoke in tongues. Everything he said, we heard it. And he emphasized, he that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. This is Spirit speaking to the churches, the Word of God. This is all we need. We don't need your abom bom papa. We don't need it. We don't need to hear that. That's not the word of God. The word of God must be preached so people can be edified. People can be changed. People can feel the spirit when you preach. Directing them to God. The God of heaven. God has a throne. Satan has a throne. God has holy angels. Satan got fallen angels. God has true prophets. Satan has false prophets, a lack of them on TV these days. God has Saturday Sabbath. Satan has Sunday Sabbath. God has a number seven. The devil has a number 666. At the end now, how will God deal with Satan? Romans 60, 20, Bible says, And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you now and forever. Amen. The devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beasts and the false prophets are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life 
will be cast into the same fire with the devil. Matthew 25, 41, Then shall they say unto them on the left side, Depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. They will be in fire. God will destroy them. So what should we do? James 4, 7 to 10. That's for you and I. Bible says, Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your heart, ye double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. Say amen out there. Do you want to give your life to Jesus? Do you need to be baptized? You have my number. Call me. Do you want to have your name written in the book of life? Do you want to be saved into the kingdom of God when Jesus comes again? Do you want Bible studies? I will pray with you. We'll make time study with you step by step. The promise is there in John 6 37. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me and he that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. God is waiting for you. God wants to save you. He wants to cleanse you. He wants to forgive you your sins. All of it. He wants to give you a new chapter. He wants to bless your life. He wants to deliver you from a hedge of protection around you. Like he did for Job. The devil couldn't go there. Because the hedge was on fire. It will burn him. That God can do the same for you. To keep us safe. Don't you give your life to him now, my brother, my sister. God is waiting for you. Let me pray with you. Father, your children have heard your word. They know we are in dangerous times. They know what the devil can do. But deliver us. Because you are our deliverer. You are our strength. You are the only hope we have. For your blood. Your blood. Your blood can speak for us. Bless us to this end we pray. Save us into your kingdom. In Jesus name. Amen. <laughs>
with their finances. You can also be an angel of hope. You can send through your donation to our Momo number 024-919-3083. 024-919-3083. And God will richly bless you. This program from the 23rd of June will start airing on Friday evening. It is still within the Sabbath time. And so, make time to meet us from the 23rd of June. It will be on Friday evenings. So, next week, we still will come your way Sabbath morning. But from 23rd June, we will be with you on Friday evening in His presence. So, we meet again next Sabbath. Read your Bible, pray every day, and know that God loves you. Shalom.
are touched, inspired and blessed by this message and want further Bible studies or want to be baptized, please send a WhatsApp or text message to 55 96 800 66. Alternatively, you can send an email to hopetvghana at gmail.com or call 0302-959065. God bless you and keep watching Hope Channel, your preferred Christian channel.